Is Kyler Gordon set to make his return to the Chicago Bears? That's where we kick things off here on today's show. My name is Harrison Graham. The Bears have designated Gordon to return from IR. And remember, all that means is that opens up his 21-day practice window, gives him that gives the Bears that much time to activate him to the active roster or shut him down for the season. Definitely don't think it's the latter. I do think he's going to be back in this 21-day window, and I think he's going to be back this week. I feel pretty good about that. I mean, Tevin Jenkins on a short week coming off IR was able to play uh, about half the snaps against Washington. So I expect Gordon back this week. There was a report after, I think, the the uh, week three game against Denver – or uh, not, not Denver, Kansas City, that Gordon was seen without a cast on. So I think he's been trending in this direction for a while, and now that he's uh, set out his minimum – required four games for being on injured reserve. I do think uh, activating him this week is uh, very likely, which is a really nice development for a secondary that's been beat up. And uh, I think we're trending back in the right direction. because Jalen Johnson said over the weekend that he plans to play this week. Now, we won't have the official injury report until Wednesday, uh, but uh, he's missed the past couple of games, the hamstring injury, I think, with the extra time between weeks uh, four or five and six. I think him returning is pretty likely. Eddie Jackson will see he's had that foot issue. Hopefully he's able to return. Uh, if he does, uh, obviously Josh Blackwell on IR as well. He's not eligible to return yet. But if Jackson also returns, assuming Gordon and Johnson do, um, you got your full secondary healthy. And again, Johnson on uh, 670 to score this weekend said, I'm quote, for sure returning this week. So uh, sounds like he's good to go. I believe Kyler Gordon's going to get activated as well, and that's a really positive development because if you get Johnson back on the outside, Tyreek Stevenson's gotten a lot of valuable experience. I also want to shout out Terrell Smith, the other rookie corner, who played really well the other night. I do wonder if there's still a role for him to rotate in because I think he's been trending up, but um, we'll see what happens there. But you get Gordon back in the nickel. Uh, you're getting healthy at the right time when you when you really have to make a move here. So uh, that's pretty nice to see Johnson, Gordon likely returning, hopefully Eddie Jackson as well. And I think the flip side of the coin too is you got to see some other players get some experience and in some cases really start to make some plays. I thought Greg Stroman played admirably the last couple of weeks. I mentioned Terrell Smith. I think he's done some good things. I think Elijah Hicks has been up and down, but at times he's made some plays. And regardless, he's been able to gain that experience. So Look, when injuries strike in the NFL, people got to step up, and I don't think it was always the prettiest level of play, but I thought uh, in some cases uh, we saw some players uh, take advantage of those opportunities. Now, if you're excited for the rest of the Bears season like I am, type me down below. Listen, this team's trending up. They're finally starting to play like the team we thought we could get uh, this year. Is it too little, too late? I hope not. You still have 12 games left. Uh, but uh, certainly behind the eight ball if you're trying to make the playoffs. But either way, I'm excited. It's been fun to watch this team the past couple of weeks. Type me in the comments if you're fired up for the rest of this season. Now, here was an interesting one. Doug Kramer's practice window has been opened as well. Again, that gives the Bears 21 days to either bring him back from IR or to shut him down for the season on season-ending uh, injured reserve. And the reason I think this one is actually pretty interesting is because the Bears have a surplus at the center position. Now, I don't mean a surplus in terms of like awesome long-term options, but if he's activated, you have four centers. <laughs> You've got Cody Whitehair, who can also play guard and has played guard. Lucas Patrick, who can also play guard, but when he's played, he's played center. Dan Feeney, who we haven't seen much of at all since the Bears traded a sixth-round pick for him, he can also play guard and center, but I think his best position is center. And then Doug Kramer, who really is only a center, sixth-round pick from last year. And the reason I think this is interesting is I just wonder, could this mean Feeney or Lucas Patrick gets cut? If they activate uh, Doug Kramer to the 53-man roster, does it make sense from a roster construction standpoint to carry four centers on the 53? I'm not sure that it does, because you think about the rest of the offensive linemen, too. Uh, Braxton Jones, ideally, is going to be back in a few weeks. Uh, you've got Larry Borum. You can't kick him off. He's your swing tackle. He's been playing. Obviously, Darnell Wright, Nate Davis, they're not going anywhere. Devin Jenkins isn't going anywhere. So you're going to carry all those guys, plus your Tyree Carter, plus four centers. Uh, I just I, I don't see it. Like I, I just wonder if a move could be coming. Now, there could be a scenario where they just want to see Doug Kramer practice and if he doesn't look the part, they could just IR stash him, keep him on season-ending IR. But I do think that's something to monitor in the next couple of weeks uh, to see because it's not like Kramer would be activated to start, whereas a guy like Kyler Gordon, obviously, if he does get activated, he will be in the starting lineup. 
Okay, uh, today's show is sponsored by Prize Picks. Guys, I've been having a blast this football season uh, with daily fantasy sports back in my life because the beauty of Prize Picks is listen, if you're normal fantasy teams, if you're already behind the eight ball, or if you're just looking to add to that, Daily Fantasy is where it's at, man. NFL, NBA, Major League Baseball, you can make picks every single day. So here's how it works. You pick two to six players that will go for more or less than their prize picks projection, and you can win up to 25 times your money. Now, with the pick two, it's just winning three times your money. Here are my picks for Monday Night Football. Less than 242 and a half passing yards for Jimmy Garoppolo. I like the more than for Devontae Adams' revenge game against the Packers. I think he goes off, but I don't think he goes off enough where Jimmy G is going to have a 250-plus yard day or something like that. So that's my pick two for tonight's game. 20 to win 60 is what I got rocking tonight. Get started with Prize Picks right now at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use our code CLNS to get a 100 uh, deposit match up to 100 bucks, I should say. You put in 50, they'll give you 50. You put in 100, they'll give you 100. You're not playing sharks. You're not playing pros. It's just you versus the projections with Prize Picks. That link and promo code of prizepicks.com slash CLNS, code CLNS, is in the description and comments of this video. Could the Bears sign veteran pass rusher Kerry Hyder. Now, the San Francisco 49ers released Hyder uh, after they traded for Randy Gregory late last week. That was actually on the same day that uh, the Bears traded Chase Claypool to the Miami Dolphins. So Hyder's just sitting there. He's available, and he's got some veteran experience. Now, the last three years, he has not had nearly the production that he had, say, in 2020, right, when he had eight and a half sacks, 10 TFLs for San Francisco. Now, part of that is, you know, back then he was more of a full-time starter. Now he's kind of just a um, specific rotation edge rusher uh, in certain situations. So I, I don't think if you bring in a guy like this, you're expecting him to give you six to eight sacks the rest of the season like that. And, look, I, I don't have huge interest. He's 32. This is a team that's gone young for the most part. Um, would I be opposed to bringing him in here on a vet minimum deal for the rest of the season over a guy like Khalid Kareem, who's now on IR and has not played a snap for this team? I'm not completely opposed to that. Dominic Robinson's not showing you much, but again, like even though this front four isn't giving you much, I mean, are you going to bench Yannick Ngakwe for him, Demarcus Walker, or even Rasheem Green? Probably not. Would he give you more than Dominic Robinson? Probably. He can also kick inside. He's 270. So again, if it's vet minimum, sure, but this is not some piece you can like build with long term. So I don't have huge interest. I had a few people uh, asking me about it after he got cut. I saw Bears Twitter was like, oh, bring Kerry Hire. And again, I'm not opposed, but it's not like this is a season changer if you bring him in. Like, it's not like the excitement we got when we signed Yannick Ngakwe. Oh, man, this guy's never had less than eight sacks. And he's honestly been pretty underwhelming. I, he's up to two sacks in five games now. So hopefully Ngakwe can get going. But um, Kerry Hyder, eh. Not really a needle mover. Now, name a player that you guys think the Bears should sign or trade for. Is there someone out there on the trade market or in free agency that you're like, yeah, man, bring this guy in here, Ryan Poles, let's go. Uh, let me know who that player is down in the comments below. All right, we've got some early returns on our week-long subscriber battle with Vikings Now. I told you on our preview video earlier today that uh, Patrick Seatman, host of Vikings Now, challenged us to a sub battle this week. We got the early advantage, 27 to 13. But as I mentioned earlier, I want to destroy Vikings Now and subscribers. That way, the Bears can destroy the Vikings this Sunday as well. If you want daily content on the Chicago Bears, be sure to hit that subscribe button. All right, let's explore the latest draft situation and scenarios for the Chicago Bears. The Bears still do hold the top two picks in the NFL draft despite finally winning a game because guess who did not win a game? That would be the Carolina Panthers who got boat raced by the Detroit Lions. Uh, so now uh, the Bears still have the top two picks. They just flipped. Carolina's pick is now number one, which of course comes to Chicago. Uh, the Bears fall to that number two slot based on strength of schedule. Then uh, you've got a bunch of one-win teams though. So I mean, if the Bears do start winning, that pick is going to move up a little bit. But uh, I still think that's okay. I mean, th this situation's playing out perfectly. Now, perfect, perfect would be the Bears are at least two and three or three and two, and they're actually playing winning football consistently. They've only won one game. But what's nice is the Bears should not be feeling like they need to tank. Carolina is going to do that for you. Now, they may not land the number one pick. Maybe Bryce Young later in the year figures some things out and they win four or five games and that pick goes to three or four or something like that. But 
I would be absolutely shocked if that pick fell outside the top five. And I think they're a clear favorite to get that top selection because that Panthers offensive line sucks. That wide receiver core is horrible. There's a reason they want to get Bryce Young more weapons. And the defense is underperforming. So, like, Carolina's in trouble, and that's very good news for the Bears because uh, they got their number one pick this year, or first-round pick this year, which is uh, very, very nice, I must add. Will the Bears land the number one pick? What do you think? Do they get that top selection? And again, it doesn't matter which pick it is, uh, their own or the Panthers. Type 1 for yes, type 0 for no. I mean, probability and odds would still say 0 for no, like take the field, but I think they're the favorite to get it because they have the top two picks right now. So uh, I'm going to be optimistic. I'm typing my 1 for yes. Thank you, Carolina. We'll take that number one pick, and uh, the Bears can figure out in April what they want to do with it. All right, a little bit, a bit of news before we get out of here. Nathan Peterman is back. On the practice squad this time, uh, the Bears cut Deslin Alexander, a UDFA rookie, off of the practice squad to make room for him. Look, I've told you this before. I'll tell you again. Uh, the Bears value him in the quarterback room. They just do. Now, Tyson Bajan is firmly the backup at this point. Justin Fields obviously playing well. He's the starter. I do think Fields values Peterman's ear, uh, and I think the coaching staff does as well. Uh, so uh, Peterman is back in the fold. And just one more note, uh, Matt Eberflew said at his press conference today uh, that uh, they are exploring adding a defensive analyst to the staff to help just take on the, the film review stuff, weekly uh, schematic uh, preparation things uh, to get ready for games because obviously with Alan Williams out of the fold, not only is Flus having to call the defense on game days, but he's having to lead uh, the entire preparation from a defensive standpoint. So I think just taking some of that work off his plate from a uh, you know Monday through Saturday uh, preparation standpoint is something that's helpful. It will not be Rod Marinelli, Matt Eberflus's mentor. He said that he is happy in retirement. So they're considering a few names, and they, uh, Flus did say if they bring someone in, they hope to do so soon. So I would guess if they bring someone in, it'll probably be this week. All right, appreciate you guys for tuning in to today's show, Latest Bears News and Rumors. Again, subscribe, help us out. Let's beat Vikings now and new subs this week. Thank you.